Good afternoon, everyone. You are looking at a live view of the SpaceX launch site at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, about an hour east of Orlando, Florida. You can see the Falcon 9 rocket there with the payload fairing on top. It is a great afternoon out at the Cape so far, a uh, little bit before sunset with patchy clouds and sky. Range has us at approximately an 80% likelihood of permissible weather, so we should be ready for launch in just under 40 minutes from now. Welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm Molly McCormick and I work in systems integration with the avionics group here at SpaceX. I'm here today with John Insbrucker, the Falcon 9 product manager, who will be giving us a status update shortly, and with Sarah Walker, who we'll speak with a little later. We are all webcasting to you live from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, where we both design and build the Falcon rockets and Dragon spacecraft. Today's mission is to launch TICOM-6, an orbital science's Geostar-2 spacecraft. TICOM-6 is a satellite being added to the telecommunications fleet of Thailand's first satellite operator, TICOM Public Company Limited. This is SpaceX's second geosynchronous transfer orbit, or GTO. TICOM-6 will be co-located with TICOM-5 at 78.5 degrees east and carry a hybrid KU and C band payload generating approximately 3.7 kilowatts of payload power. This is SpaceX's second geosynchronous transfer mission for the Falcon 9 rocket, coming hot on the heels of our success last month, boosting the SE-8 satellite into orbit, where our customer reports it is currently happy and healthy. For those of you who aren't familiar with the term, a geosynchronous transfer orbit is a highly elliptical Earth orbit that requires two burns of the Falcon 9 second stage. We'll talk more about this later in our webcast, along with what we expect to see from today's launch. But first, let's go to the rocket on the pad and get an update on today's mission from John. Good afternoon or good evening. I'm John Insbrucker, the Falcon 9 product director. And welcome to our first launch of the new year, the first of many missions planned for the next 12 months. Now, I've been listening to the countdown for the past several hours, and I'll be bringing you status updates as we go through the webcast. Now it's mid-afternoon here in our SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Now folks are gathering in front of the mission control room in preparation for following today's launch and we'll bring you some of the energy from the floor a little bit later in the webcast. As I've said before, it's always the most exciting part of the job when we launch the Falcon 9 for the SpaceX team. And we'll hopefully see the payoff of a lot of hard work in just a little bit in the webcast. Now currently it's just over T-minus 36 minutes to launch. We're counting down from our launch pad at Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral. The launch time is targeted for 5.06 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 22 hours 6 minutes Universal Time. We launched from this same pad just over a month ago with our most recent Falcon 9 launch. Now currently the SpaceX team is working no problems on the launch vehicle. We rolled out to the launch pad about 13 hours ago, just after midnight, and went vertical with the rocket a few hours later. At about T minus four hours, we began loading propellant onto the Falcon 9 first and second stages. Currently, we have about 850,000 pounds of propellant on the first stage and 200,000 pounds of propellant on the second stage. We're continuing to top off liquid oxygen on both stages up until the last minutes of the count. And you can see this in the white gaseous oxygen plumes coming off of the vehicle. We've also continued to load the last little bits of nitrogen and helium gas on the vehicle. And we're preparing to go to internal power on Falcon 9 batteries a little bit later on in the countdown. Now today, Falcon 9 is carrying the TICOM-6 satellite. The TICOM satellite uses a combination of KU and C-band communication frequencies to provide coverage of Southeast Asia and South Africa. The spacecraft is based upon Orbital Science's Star Bus. At liftoff, the TICOM-6 satellite will weigh approximately 3,300 kilograms, or just over 7,300 pounds. Now currently, the TICOM team is not working any issues. Their last major event is transferring to the spacecraft internal power batteries 
starting at about T minus 27 minutes. We're launching from the Air Force's Eastern Range at Cape Canaveral. Currently, the Air Force is ready to support the launch with all of the capabilities required by the Falcon 9. And finally, on the weather front, as Molly said, 80% probability of good conditions. We've also been releasing balloons, and so far it looks like the upper altitude winds are go. So Falcon 9, TICOM 6, the range, and the spacecraft are go for launch. The launch window for today's launch runs from 2.06 p.m. to 4.08 p.m. Pacific, which is 5.06 p.m. to 7.08 p.m. Eastern, and this should give us a beautiful viewing of today's launch. Uh, the Eastern time is uh, 5, let's see, 5.05 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. Eastern, sorry. If we miss today's liftoff time due to weather or for any other reason, we can reset and try again tomorrow. As I mentioned earlier, today's launch of the Falcon 9 will carry the TICOM-6 satellite. Falcon 9 will place it in a geosynchronous orbit. From there, the satellite will eventually maneuver itself into a geostationary orbit, where it is expected to have an operational lifespan of 15 years. Geosynchronous orbit means an object will orbit around the Earth's equator at the same t rate that the Earth is spinning on its axis. Geostationary orbits are a subset of geosynchronous orbits. Not only do they orbit the Earth once per day, they do so in a circular orbit around the equator, as opposed to one that covers multiple latitudes. From an observer's point of view, on the surface of the Earth, a geostationary satellite will stay fixed at a single point in the sky. Geostationary orbits maintain an altitude of over 22,000 miles above the surface of the Earth. That's only about a tenth of the distance to the Moon, but it's over 50 times further than the highest shuttle mission ever flown, and almost 100 times further than the International Space Station. For comparison, that's the difference between driving down the California coast between Santa Barbara and San Diego and driving from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C., around the opposite side of the planet. Our primary objective at SpaceX is delivering our customers' payloads safely and reliably to orbit. To deliver the most reliable launch vehicles and spacecraft ever flown, SpaceX continuously advances the boundaries of what's possible, both technologically and organizationally. It's challenging, but it's the only way to make real progress towards our ambitious goals. Let's take an in-depth look at our facilities at the Cape with Sarah. I'm Sarah Walker, Mission Integrator at SpaceX, and today we're taking a closer look at Launch Complex 40, SpaceX's launch site for today's mission. Space Launch Complex 40, or SLIC 40 for short, is located at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, about an hour outside of Orlando, Florida. Its location on the southeast coast of the United States provides access to a wide range of low and medium inclination orbits. It's commonly used for resupply missions to the International Space Station. It provides access to geosynchronous transfer orbits, which is appealing to communication satellites. And it can also be used for departures to the moon and interplanetary destinations. There's a tremendous amount of history here at Cape Canaveral and the adjoining Kennedy Space Center. All of the Apollo missions were launched here, and SpaceX's own launch pad was home to the Titan IV, the largest vehicle in the American fleet at the time. SpaceX broke ground on the pad in late 2007 and began making a lot of changes to get it ready for Falcon 9 launches. Falcon 9 is a two-stage liquid-fueled rocket which uses rocket-grade kerosene, or RP-1, as a fuel and liquid oxygen as an oxidizer. There are two 28,000-gallon RP-1 tanks on the launch pad, as well as a 110,000-gallon liquid oxygen ball that we refurbished from the Apollo program. Just beneath the launch pad is the flame duct, a massive structure designed to direct acoustic and thermal energy as well as high-velocity gases away from the base of the rocket at launch. Surrounding the launch pad are four giant lightning protection towers. This area gets a lot of lightning year-round, so these towers are a must. The SpaceX hangar right next to the launch pad is where final Falcon 9 vehicle integration takes place. Current missions are also doing final spacecraft processing and fairing encapsulation from an annex to this hangar. But to prepare for the many launches we have scheduled out of the Cape in the next few years, SpaceX is preparing a payload processing facility about a mile southwest of Slick 40. This is where our customers can do their final fit checks and propellant loading before they're encapsulated into the SpaceX fairing. One of the most notable changes SpaceX made to the launch pad is we tore down the mobile tower that used to be in the center of the pad and replaced it with our own transporter erector, or TE for short. The TE stands 200 feet high and is lowered from vertical to horizontal using large hydraulic pistons at the base of the TE. 
It also has four launch hold downs that, like the name indicates, hold down the vehicle for two to three seconds following ignition. This is for the flight computer to verify that all propulsion systems are operating nominally. If the system detects any issues, it commands an abort and the vehicle is not released for flight. The TE moves in and out of the hangar on a series of rails that existed on the pad before SpaceX moved in. When the vehicle is ready, the TE is lowered to horizontal, rolled into the hangar, and connected to the vehicle. They are then rolled back out to the pad together and raised to vertical. SpaceX continues to have one of the most responsive launch operations in the industry. It currently takes about six hours to go from rolling out of the hangar to ready for launch, but we're looking to bring that down to just an hour for future missions. I hope you enjoyed your quick look behind the scenes at our Cape launch site. Now let's get back to launch. I hope you enjoyed that video from my visit to our launch site at Cape Canaveral. Again, I'm Sarah Walker. I work with the product and mission management team here at SpaceX, and I'm your third host for today's webcast. I'm now speaking to you live from right outside Mission Control here at SpaceX headquarters, where the SpaceX team is starting to gather for the TICOM 6 launch. You know, this team is really something remarkable. What an adventure we've had in the 12 years since SpaceX was founded in 2002. We've grown to over 3,000 employees and developed two rockets and one ISS resupplying spacecraft. To date, we've successfully launched nine Falcon rockets, that's two Falcon 1s and set seven Falcon 9s, to a variety of destinations, from the International Space Station to low Earth orbit to geosynchronous transfer orbits used by satellites like TICOM-6 that we're launching today. We've carried both scientific and commercial payloads, as well as our own spacecraft, which we call Dragon. Speaking of Dragon, right above my head is our Dragon C-1 spacecraft, which flew two orbits of the Earth in December 2010, making it the first private spacecraft in history to orbit and return to Earth. We've flown Dragon three more times since then atop our Falcon 9 rocket, each time successfully completing our mission to bring experiments, food, and supplies to the International Space Station. With Dragon, SpaceX is restoring the capability to deliver and return significant amounts of cargo to and from the orbiting laboratory. The next one is targeted for launch next month, so I hope you'll join us again to see it. We're not flying Dragon today, of course, but it's a great reminder of where we've been as we move into today's launch. And 2013 alone was an incredibly exciting year here at SpaceX. In March, we launched CRS-2, bringing 1,200 pounds of supplies to the International Space Station including critical materials to support the 160 investigations planned for the Expedition 34 crew. The onboard crew unloaded Dragon and filled it back up with 2,300 pounds of return cargo, including crew supplies, human research materials, biotechnology experiments, and space station hardware. We successfully returned all of this cargo to Earth after our three-week stay on station. Then, in September, we launched the Canadian Cassiope satellite for MDA. This was a demonstration flight of our upgraded Falcon 9 rocket and our first launch out of our launch site at Vandenberg Air Force Base. We delivered the primary payload, Cassiope, as well as three secondary satellites, CUSAT, Dandy, and Popax, to low Earth orbit. This was also the first fairing mission atop of Falcon 9, an impressive structure uh, that Molly will tell you more about in just a moment. A few months later, just one month ago now, SpaceX launched the SES-8 telecommunication satellite into a geosynchronous transfer orbit. It was our first launch to this orbit, 80,000 kilometers from Earth, and our most challenging mission to date. Thanks to the Rockstar team of engineers and operators here at SpaceX, we executed 100% of our mission objectives. I'm looking forward to seeing another launch into this unique type of orbit in just a few moments for TICOM-6. Well, let's go back to Molly now to give you an overview of the SpaceX fairing, which will enclose and protect TICOM-6 during today's launch. As Sarah just showed us, Falcon 9 is a truly impressive vehicle representing the efforts of a world-class workforce and cutting-edge manufacturing and integration techniques. We do extensive testing at the component level and at the system level to verify both nominal functionality and additional functional margin for safety and reliability. But no amount of testing can equate to exposing the technology to the rigors of a real environment. Fortunately, we've now done so twice. The first time in September, when we successfully launched our upgraded Falcon 9 for out of our new launch pad at the Vandenberg Air Force Base in Lompoc, California. The second time was just last month out of Launch Complex 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Both times, we successfully delivered all payloads to the correct orbits, and both the Canadian Space Agency and SES report that their satellites arrived in great condition and have been performing nominally ever since. Overall, we've had great success with this vehicle so far, and we look forward to liftoff just a short while from now. For today's mission, while there's no guarantee we'll have video coverage, we expect to follow the vehicle via onboard cameras until roughly 14 minutes into flight and just after fairing separation. 
at which point we do expect to lose signal. Separation of the TICOM-6 satellite does not happen until about T plus 33 minutes, so we won't be covering that, webcast on the webca that live on the webcast today. However, we will continue to provide text updates online at SpaceX.com and on Twitter via the at SpaceX handle. If we are lucky enough to see the fairing separate in this webcast, this brief video gives you a sense of what it may look like. This was captured at NASA Glenn's Plum Brook Station in the recently built Reverberant Acoustic Test Facility. For those of you that don't know, the fairing is the bullet-shaped shell sitting at the top of the rocket that covers the satellite, or payload, during launch and protects it from the rough environment while simultaneously increasing the aerodynamics of the vehicle. At 43 feet long and 17 feet in diameter at its widest point, which is just over 13 meters long by 5 meters in diameter, SpaceX's fairing is large enough to fit a city bus inside. The fairing separates into two halves when the rocket is traveling nearly 10 times the speed of sound, three times as fast as the fastest known manned aircraft, the SR-71 Blackbird. Now the SpaceX team talked about, uh, we talked about extensive system testing in Molly's uh, discussion just now. A recent example of that was the static fire that we conducted on this Falcon 9 just several days ago on December 28th. In that test, we counted down the Falcon 9 with the actual countdown procedure. We loaded propellant on both stages, we pressurized the vehicle, counted it down to zero, and lit the nine Merlin engines on the first stage. This gave us the opportunity to make sure that the launch vehicle, the ground systems integrated together were working well and that we were ready to go forward and plan to launch the Falcon 9 with TICOM 6. This also demonstrated our advantage of the liquid propulsion system we use on Falcon 9 where we can hold the vehicle before releasing it. It's an example of what we call test like you fly as well as test what you fly. Currently we're at T minus 22 and a half minutes, working no issues, everything's going well still in the countdown. SpaceX is the world's fastest growing launch services provider. We have nearly 50 launches on Manifest, and 2014 will be a very busy year. Our launch manifest is populated by a diverse customer base, including space station resupply missions, commercial satellite launch missions, and U.S. government science and national security missions. One of the most influential factors in safely achieving such an aggressively paced launch schedule is that we manufacture nearly everything for our launch vehicles and spacecraft in-house, right here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Right next to me is the composite section, where we manufacture the strong, lightweight, carbon composite parts for our launch vehicles and spacecraft. Across the aisle is the propulsion section, where our Merlin engines are assembled. Behind that, the Dragon Clean Room, where our spacecraft gets integrated and tested before being shipped to the Cape for a launch. And in the back are our massive friction stir welding machines, where we fabricate our tanks, domes, and stages for the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch vehicles. Speaking of the heavy, we look forward to the debut, he debut launch of the Falcon Heavy, our newest line of launch vehicles. The heavy will provide the world's largest available lift capacity up to 53 metric tons, or 117,000 pounds, to low Earth orbit. I can't wait to see those first Falcon Heavy launches out of Vandenberg. This year is a huge year for SpaceX across the board. We'll be launching numerous commercial satellites, a satellite for the United States Air Force, and more cargo resupply missions to the International Space Station. Also, as a part of the Commercial Crew Integrated Capability Program, we expect to conduct up to two ascent abort tests in 2014 with our crew version of Dragon. Both are to demonstrate that if anything anomalous were to occur with the Falcon 9 while crew is on board, the Dragon spacecraft is capable of separating itself from the rocket and parachuting the crew to safety. Finally, we have some exciting plans for continued development of reus reusable first stage that can return to the pad after launch. Let's check in with Molly to find out more about what's com coming up this year. One of our facilities that you do not see as often, but is critical to SpaceX's success, is our rocket development facility in McGregor, Texas. In addition to supporting our structural and propulsion testing, Texas has also been where we have been testing our Grasshopper vertical takeoff and landing vehicle. This vehicle has a Falcon 9 first stage tank, a single Merlin engine, and four sturdy landing legs, and it takes off and lands entirely under rocket power. This SpaceX internally funded program is intended to change the way we get to space by helping lead to the creation of a fully reusable launch system. The importance of achieving launch vehicle reusability cannot be overstated. 
The current state-of-the-art worldwide is to throw away the rocket as soon as it has completed its flight profile. On multi-stage rockets, first stages generally break up on re-entry and fall into the ocean almost immediately. Later stages, which are responsible for maneuvering their payloads into the correct orbit at much higher altitudes, stay in orbit for a while, coasting on momen momentum alone, before meeting the same fate. In terms of cost and logistics, this is the equivalent of throwing away a 747 after every transatlantic flight. Imagine how expensive plane tickets would be if that's how the airline industry worked. That's why SpaceX is working so hard towards creating a reusable first stage. Instead of losing the first stage to dynamics, our intent is to have it fly itself home, extend its landing legs, touch down on the pad, and be ready to launch again as soon as possible. We'll be conducting a series of test flights of increasing altitude and complexity on the F-9R vehicle in New Mexico to enable us to advance our reusable rocket technology, so stay tuned for that. We're just over 18 and a half minutes from the opening of the launch window today, and the team continues to be green and go for T0 at 5.06 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 22 hours, 6 minutes Universal Time. Now today's flight is very similar in mission profile to the flight that we flew over a month ago in early December. In this case, SpaceX's Falcon 9 will be placing TICOM-6 into a geosynchronous transfer orbit. However, in this case, we'll be using a slightly higher apogee altitude and a slightly different inclination. But overall, the mission profile will look very similar to the one that we flew a month ago. In this case, the spacecraft will separate from the Falcon 9 about 31 and a half minutes into flight. Now today's launch window extends for two hours and two minutes. We're obviously targeting the opening of the window in just over 17 and a half minutes from now. But if we run into a problem in the next few minutes, we can hold a T minus 13 minutes. Or as you've seen in the past, if you followed our webcast, as we get inside terminal count inside of T minus 10 minutes where the computers are running the countdown, we have the opportunity, if something comes up, to hold, recycle back to T minus 13 minutes, address the problem, re-pull the team, and then proceed back towards a new T0. So, however, with today's two-hour window, while we've got time, should we need it, to work possible problems that may come up, we're obviously looking forward to going at the opening of the window and celebrating a great amount of work here by the SpaceX team. Now currently first and second stage tanks are continuing to top off. As we get inside of T minus 10 minutes in the terminal count, we'll open the pre-valves that are currently isolating propellants from the Merlin engines. When that happens, liquid oxygen will begin to chill in the nine Merlin 1D turbo pumps, getting them ready for ignition just before T minus zero. When this happens, you'll see the white gaseous plumes of oxygen coming out from the base of the rocket. That's normal for this part of the countdown. Another thing to look forward to in the terminal count is at about T minus six minutes, we begin to open up the clamp that is attached to the second stage and the erector strongback will recline away from the vehicle. That'll be getting ready for pressurizing the tanks. We'll bring the tanks up to full flight pressure. You'll see the gaseous oxygen and cut off from the vehicle, signifying that we're getting ready for launch. Finally, we'll hear the final goes from the range, we'll count down, and we'll go to T0. Now the spacecraft team has transferred successfully to their internal battery power. They began at it about T minus 27 minutes, gave their final go. The Air Force ranges go to support launch. The balloon data indicates that conditions are acceptable for flight through the upper atmosphere well into today's two hour and two minute window. So everything's looking good on the Falcon 9. During launch, we will see views from Falcon 9 itself with a camera mounted on the second stage, looking down from about 12 stories above the launch pad. From this camera, we are going to watch the 10-minute ride all the way to orbit. After today's launch, you can follow SpaceX.com and our social media pages for updates. And we now have an online SpaceX shop open, so you can check it out at shop.spacex.com. Now let's go back to Sarah on the floor to see how the team is doing. The energy level is really building down here on the factory floor. The SpaceX team is gathered for launch, looking into mission control right over there. This scene is typical around launch time. The entire SpaceX team is fully invested in getting our customers safely and reliably to orbit, so it's typical for everyone to gather here to support every mission. 
This is my favorite part about working at SpaceX, watching launch while standing next to all of my teammates that worked so hard to make the launch happen. Well, it's almost time to switch over to the launch pad cameras, so let's first check in with John for one final status update. In just over a minute, the SpaceX launch conductor is going to count, going to conduct the readiness poll for terminal count. We'll listen into that. Currently, we're not working any issues, as I said just moments ago. Things are looking good for a liftoff in just over 14 minutes from now. Now, currently, we've had two great successes in the last few months on Falcon 9, but as always, the most important mission is the one that's coming up in front of us right now. You know, I've said it before, space is hard. It takes a lot of diligence, a lot of hard work to make this happen. So as a team, we put in those hours, we put in that hard work, we've done our reviews, we've closed out the issue tickets, and right now the SpaceX team is ready to count it down, and hopefully we'll see the great payoff for a lot of hard work coming up here shortly. Now we're gonna listen in to the launch conductor's poll coming up in half a minute, following that, We'll listen to directions to the team, then we'll go into the terminal count at T minus 10 minutes, culminating at liftoff as the Falcon 9 ignites with 1.3 million pounds of thrust on the first stage engines to carry TICOM 6 into outer space. So with that, let's listen along as the SpaceX launch conductor pulls the team for readiness to enter the terminal countdown sequence. All stations verify ready for launch. FTS. FTS go. Prop. Props go. AVI. AVI's go. GNC. GNC's go. Ground. Ground is go. VC. VC's go. GC. GC's go. RC. RC's go. CC. CC's go. OSM. OSM go. Rock. Rock's go. Mission manager. MM go. CE. C is go. LD. LD is go. And LC or go to initiate terminal count for step 60.4. Copy. Proceeding. minus 12 minutes. BC, start the terminal count. Auto sequence set to start at T, T minus 10 minutes. Copy that. Proceeding. If a hold is called from this point forward, the terminal count auto sequence will be aborted. Indicate an abort or hold condition by saying hold, hold, hold on the primary countdown net. In this event, the VC will immediately abort the auto sequence. The VC shall not abort the auto sequence after T minus 10 seconds, and operators shall not call a hold after T minus 10 seconds. If a hold is called, all operators proceed to the terminal count abort steps in section 10.62. Attention all personnel, stand by to pick up the count at T minus 10 minutes on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. Terminal count is continued. GCVC stand by on fire X. GC standing by. Standing by. RC start the range video recorders. Roger, Edward. OSM set launch enable the flight. Flight.
ground T-tip system is setting up. Ground helium spin start system is set up. T-minus nine minutes. All first stage engines are chilling in. Nitrogen ACS is closing out. T-minus seven minutes. First and second stage heater and auto sequences have started. First and second stage internal auto sequences have started. Ground TVC system setting up. T-minus six minutes. Tanks are pressing in preparation for strong back retract. Vehicles on internal power. Strong back clamps are opening. T minus five minutes. Strong back is retracting. Performing second stage TVC motions.
T minus four minutes. Verify is good. Stage two, TVC motion. LD, verify. Go for launch. Falcon Nine, Tycom. Go for launch. First stage tank pressing up. Vehicles in self alignment. Rock, verify range go. Range green. Just chilled in for flight. has control of the vehicle. Second stage tanks pressing. Second stage tanks at pressure. All tanks at pressure. T minus 30 seconds. T-minus 20. T-minus 15. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have liftoff of the Falcon 9. Falcon 9 has cleared the towers. First stage propulsion healthy. OSMGC reporting at 8. Reporting. First stage propellant utilization active. T 
plus 60 seconds, altitude 6 kilometers, velocity 266 meters per second, downrange distance 1.9 kilometers. Vehicle supersonic. Vehicles reach maximum aerodynamic pressure. Good telemetry lock. plus two minutes, altitude 30 kilometers, speed 1.1 kilometers per second, downrange distance 30 kilometers. Stage two chilling in. plus 2 minutes 30 seconds. Vehicles on the nominal trajectory. Mika 1. Stage that confirmed. And that ignition confirmed. Stage 2 propellant utilization active. Fairing separation confirmed. T plus 270 seconds, altitude 135 kilometers, speed 3 kilometers per second, downrange distance 383 kilometers. Good to one tree lock. Power systems nominal. Stage two propulsion looking good. T plus 325 seconds, altitude 160 kilometers, speed 3.8 kilometers per second, downrange distance 582 kilometers.
power system still nominal. T plus 400 seconds. Vehicle remains on the nominal. Antigua AOS. T plus 410 seconds. Altitude 175 kilometers. Speed 4.8 kilometers per second. Downrange distance 920 kilometers. Stage 2 propulsion performance is good. T plus 460 seconds, altitude 178 kilometers, speed 5.6 kilometers per second, downrange distance 1,200 kilometers. Start a terminal guidance. FTS is saved. Tell four lost signal. SpaceX operating on Antigua data at this time. T plus five fifteen seconds, altitude hundred and seventy eight kilometers, distance. Downrange distance, 1,500 1, kilometers. MVAC shutdown confirmed. Park orbit insertion. Looks like a good orbit insertion. 497 by 173 kilometers, inclined 27.7 degrees to the equator. As you can see, we're all very excited here at SpaceX for another successful launch as the team continues to look intently into mission control right behind me. We hope you enjoyed watching from home too. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for joining us. Everyone at SpaceX wishes you a very happy new year. And it looks like we have another successful launch of the Falcon 9 rocket to geosynchronous orbit. Now remember, you can follow SpaceX at our social media pages, spacex.com, look at our Twitter, see what future events we've got, as well as uh, get further updates on today's flight. But right now, that's going to end our webcast. We'd like to thank everybody, including our TICOM partners. And uh, again, another great afternoon, evening for SpaceX and the uh, Falcon 9 mission. And we'll see you next time for the flight of the CRS-3 Dragon to the International Space Station. Thanks, and good night, everybody.